Hello everybody, this is Russ Bucher from Control My Nikon and welcome to the Using Cinematographer Pro tutorial. Cinematographer Pro is a new product this year and it is a very unique software for dedicated video capture using Nikon DSLRs. So let's give it a try. Here I have it installed on my Windows 7 64-bit system and I'm going to just uh, go to the icon here and this is what it looks like. Now Control My Nikon is our main product that's been out for several years and you use that as a still photographer to capture still images and you can even use Control My Nikon to capture video. However, if you'd like to have more pro level functionality for capturing video, Cinematographer Pro is the way to go. It basically gives you the capabilities of pro-level field monitors. And a field monitor is normally what a cinematographer would plug into their camera so they can watch on an external monitor uh, what the composition and exposure is. And these can be quite complex and expensive. And Cinematographer Pro allows you to use a tablet or a netbook or a laptop or just a regular desktop PC to do the same thing. So I'm just going to double click here and start it up. Okay, and this is the main Cinematographer Pro version 3.0 window. Now you notice right away that this software is only for the Nikon D7000 and D5100 cameras. The reason for that is those are the only two Nikon cameras that we can remotely control to capture video. The other cameras such as a D90 or a D3000 or a D300S can capture video but not remotely. So unfortunately those cannot be used by Cinematographer Pro. Now there's several things we could take a look at here before we get started. Uh, one is the settings. So when I click on settings, it brings up the settings window and you could select here between using a D7000 or D5100 and if you have a 5100 all you need to do is just click on it here and now you're using a 5100 and then you'd connect to your camera. But here uh, I'm going to leave it for my D7000 and I have a D7000 with a 105 millimeter macro lens attached and we'll be shooting some video of some flowers as an example. You could turn the live view quality to high or low. I'll keep it high because this is a pretty fast computer. By default the look and feel of Cinematographer Pro is very dark which is okay when you have darker lighting but if you like to change that just change the theme to click here and it flips it to a lighter theme which is better when you have brighter lighting. So darker theme or a lighter theme and I'm just going to keep it on dark and here we're able to enter the inner and outer bracketing setup for monitoring the exposure. And we can also specify the aspect ratio and I'm just going to leave it at 16 to 9 and I'll close this. Now all you need to do to connect to your camera is connect your USB cable to it, turn on the power on your camera and click on connect. And you see here it's connected to your camera. So right now it is connected, but we're not in live view yet. So to turn on live view, you just click on live view. So we're only viewing the flowers here in live view. We haven't started recording yet. And to start recording, all we need to do is press the record button. At this point, you know, you could take your subject, you could move it around a little bit, get your composition just right, and this isn't much of a masterpiece here creatively. So now that we have things composed, what we can do is we can record. So to record you just press the record button and these flashing red bars mean that it's currently recording. And as we're viewing this in live view, the camera is recording this video onto the memory card on the camera. And later on, when you want to retrieve that file from your camera, you just shut down the Cinematographer Pro and then retrieve the data file from your memory card the way you normally would retrieve um, images. Okay, let's stop recording. Now if I click on record button again, it gives me an option here. Do I want to stop or continue? Well, I'm just going to stop. And now the video recording is complete and has been saved onto your memory card. Now at any time, you can also adjust certain properties on the camera. Now on a D7000, you can adjust the shutter. So uh, by default here, I have my camera set up to 145th for a shutter speed because generally the rule is when you're capturing video for a cinematic feel you want a shutter speed about twice that of your frames per second that the video is being recorded. And right now I'm recording at 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames a second and I set that up on the camera LCD menu. 
So shutter speed, 1 45th. Now you could set your aperture for however you like to set up your composition. I just selected F11 here, it looks okay. And I also set the ISO, uh, and I set this to ISO 200 because uh, I want to have as little noise as possible. And I have plenty of lighting here. I have two hot halogen lights illuminating these flowers, so I can go low on the ISO. Now if you need to adjust these, if you wanted to increase the ISO, you could do that. And you can see as you increase the ISO, it is going to be going brighter and brighter. And so you can just adjust these as needed. But normally, really, if you're shooting video, you should set your shutter speed at aperture and ISO and leave it and then control the lighting for your exposure. So maybe move the lights back and forth or use a fader filter to adjust your exposure. You can also control the shutter. So if I uh, go this way with my shutter, you can see how the exposure is getting darker. I'll bring that back to 1 45th. Now you can't control aperture here and Nikon does not allow us to control the aperture while in live view mode or while recording video on a D7000 and a D5100. I'm not too sure why they don't allow us to do that. It would sure be nice. But if you want to adjust your aperture, you need to go back, go out of live view, go to exposure, and here you can see it's enabled. So now you can adjust it. And then go back into live view. So anytime you want to change the aperture, you need to leave live view, change it, come back into live view. Now some other things we have here are the guides. Now guides allow us to do things like lines for thirds. So here's a rule of thirds compositional lines or quads. So this one isn't quite as popular, but it does allow you to get a center point and a center line on your composition and also margins, and you could control how far the margins are out from the actual edge of your image with these buttons here. So you can use this to help frame your composition, and you could turn it off. Now, at any time, you can change the colors. So uh, if for whatever reason your composition had a lot of white in it and that is very difficult to see, well, I might say, let's use blue instead. And that's true for any of these. You can have quads, different color, thirds, and you could turn them all on if you wanted to, although that's a bit of overkill. Okay, I'm just going to go back. Now let's take a look at how we can examine the exposure of this video. On the D7000 and D5100, you can set up your camera for basically a manual mode. So the information that comes back from the camera during live view is basically what you see is what you get. So if I press record here, it's going to have the same exposure as I see here in the live view window. So then if I wanted to see what the exposure is going to be like, if I start recording now, I could just press the histogram button and it shows a luminance, red, green, and blue histogram. And the exposure here is pretty good, just looking at the luminance. The red is blown out, but it's quite a, a reddish scene anyways, so really can't avoid that. I'm just going to pass my hand between the light and the flowers here and you'll see these histograms move as the scene darkens. And I'll just do the same on the other light. So when you have the histogram up like this, you can easily move around the lighting to get your exposure just right. Okay, I'm going to turn off the histogram. And we're going to take a look at the exposure bracketing. Back in the settings, we had an inner bracket and an outer bracket. A luminance histogram varies in value from 0 to 255. 0 being dark, 255 means blown out white. So I want the image to be highlighted, let's say in yellow. Now the outer bracket allows you to be able to see areas of your image that are below a certain luminance or above a certain luminance. So I'm going to tell it to highlight my outer bracket in blue. Okay, so I'm going to close, go back in the live view, and press enter. So those areas here 
that are in the inner exposure bracket are between, what was it, 150 and 180. Now this is useful if you're trying to ensure that certain areas of your image are correctly exposed. So if you're trying to set up a composition to show, for an example, an interview, you may want the skin tones between 150 and 180 and keep those there at all times. So you just adjust your lighting so uh, it gets there. So I'm going to turn off inner and let's take a look at outer. Remember, outer shows us the areas that are less than 10 or greater than 245. So things that are very dark or very bright. And we could see here, this is showing us this dark area in the background here, kind of further into the plant. And you can see a little bit of blue sparkling here. This is uh, blown out uh, whites. Now, they're not completely blown out. They're just over 245. Blown out is 255. Using the inner and outer bracketing allows you to set up an IRE equivalent graph. On a lot of high-end field monitors, they have a diagram that shows just how bright the scene is. And the camera can actually capture things that are brighter or darker than can be sent on a video broadcast. So people who are shooting those videos need to ensure that it's not too bright and not too dark. You can use the inner and outer brackets to see if there's any areas in your image that are just too bright or too dark and would exceed the broadcast limitations. Now, if you're recording a video just for YouTube, then it really doesn't matter as long as you haven't blown it out or if it's not too dark or maybe for pur artistic purposes you do want to blow it out or have it dark, but that's all fine. Okay, I'm just going to turn these off and you can put all these on if you like at the same time to really get a good idea where your exposure is, but I'll just turn them off here.